So the piece I'm presenting at the end of the month is for the uh, 2011 a novice bodybuilding championships uh, hosted by uh, SABA, Saskatchewan Amateur Bodybuilding Association. Uh, something I've been part of for the last uh, seven years. I competed seven years uh, in a row and it was time to take a little bit of rest. I wasn't necessarily the best uh, bodybuilder on stage but nonetheless I did uh, paid my dues I guess and uh, learned my lessons and, and part of the reason why I was asked to do this project uh, was because they liked how I performed on stage. And I guess it was just coming and being a mixture of a martial art and performing in martial arts in forms and applying that to bodybuilding and putting that on stage all together in one. The show is at the end of April, April 29th I believe, and uh, they asked me to do this commission piece of, of one of the hosts. And the host is Jay Cutler, who is a, a Mr. Olympia four-time champion. And this title, Mr. Olympia, is the title of of uh, a bodybuilding world and the painting itself is a combination of a cup of, of his body parts uh, from two different poses and what I did is I just put the two together and let them mold. Now what's interesting about letting muscle come into muscle, muscle coming out of muscle, it becomes very almost abstract because you can see there's something there that's supposed to make sense but it doesn't make sense and there's something there that looks fluent and looks like a, a figure or, or muscle figure or muscle figurative but yet it disappears into something else and uh, so the molding of these muscles of this human form becomes very metaphysical itself you can even put a quantum physics level on there as well too because it starts to come in and out of existence and I'm hoping if I do this right then on stage and when people see this stage on the unveiling of this painting that they're going to look at this painting and, and see themselves moving in and out of existence. It's the same way as you were to go to bed and fall asleep at night. In a sense you're, you're moving away from that existence, from this reality and you're moving into a different reality of this world, of this dream world. Where I think there's a lot more knowing there than, than there is in reality here. Uh, the, the art of bodybuilding combines nutrition and that changes for everyone to their own specific needs. There's no one fixed diet for anyone to use. It always changes. And even during your training, your, your, as your body starts to change, your diet has to change. So it has to be monitored. You gotta know and understand how your body relates to the training on a metaphysical level. Sometimes it transforms into this, this metamorphosis of a body. You'll come to the gym, with good intentions of getting in shape, feeling better about yourself, and by all means, those are good things. But something changes while you start to train and it becomes uh, very much to see where your limits lie. And next thing you know, you start to become that bodybuilder, that artist, that sculptor in that bodybuilding, and you wind up bringing out that potential. The idea of the bodybuilding on stage is, is to, to clarify those muscles groups. Uh, there are different physiques that are on stage and you'll notice the difference when you look very closely. And as a judge, you're looking for a few things. You're looking at the clarity of the muscle group, you're looking at the shape and size of the muscle group, and the definition. So there's a really fine balance between the training itself and the nutrition that you conceive as well too. Right at the days of the weigh-in, you are physically dropping probably a good 10 to 12 pounds of water. So you're becoming quite dehydrated. And over that, just to, to fit into your weight category, now this part becomes dangerous. You have to be very aware of still who you are. So all together, it's a collectively of the spirits, the mind, the body, the physical, the metaphysical, wherever you want to draw that energy source from, it's, it's there to help you throughout the days.
I look at bodybuilding as an art in general. We're trying to sculpt a body to be its absolute best and be perfected. And when you look at art, that's what you look at. You're looking at something that the mind came together and sat there and, and drew up. And that's what we do looking in the mirror. We try to actually become a work of art. And I'm just, I'm just honored. I mean, what can I say? I can't wait to see it. That's, what I, that's all. What's neat about the competition itself is that uh, no one is ever against each other. This is on my experience. But everyone seems to know or has a collective agreement that, you know what? You look fantastic. You put in three months of training and dieting to get yourself to this point just for a 60 second presentation on stage. That's very difficult to do. And uh, yeah, there are different categories and so forth, tall, short, weight categories. Uh, so you're a little more comparable with, with the ones in your group. But in the end, it's the one who disciplines themselves the best will, will be the winner. The one who shapes their muscles and sculpts their muscles the best is going to be that winner. I have to hand to you, judges. I've never really judged a bodybuilding show before. And all I really have to go by was based on my own experience and myself as an artist. And I looked at the competitors tonight, and by all means, there was a lot of talent that was on stage. But I had to decide who was going to receive this, this award. So I used the comparison of the notion of water. And if you look at the nature of water itself, it's very soft. But in the end, it can penetrate the dentist's rock. Water itself, when poured into a cup, becomes the cup. When water is poured into a bowl, becomes the bowl. Thus, so does this painting it becomes, again, that formless form. So I'm gonna pass it over, and if you could do the honors in announcing the winner, I would be greatly honored. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Our best overall poser tonight is competitor number 66, Malcolm Clark. The experience has been Phenomenal. I've had support to family and friends. My trainer has been absolutely amazing, Jamie Poulsen, who's here, and his family. Uh, he's helped me through ups and downs, and uh, winning would have been great, but the process was what I was looking for. And to have recognition of a performance that I struggled with, honestly, from the very beginning, uh, to, to decide and finalize on what I wanted, um, it didn't come together until the last uh, the last week. So um, right now I'm actually really touched and kind of kind of emotional, I guess. But uh, it's been absolutely amazing. The ride's been phenomenal. So yeah, it does take a lot. I mean, I've been doing this for 19 years, and I've pretty much lived my whole lifestyle of eating, sleeping, training, day in, day out. I train six days a week, two hours a day, and uh, you know I display that every year on the bodybuilding stage so obviously a lot of hard work and dedica dedication goes into what we do but the payoff is beneficial when you get up on stage and you have the audience cheer for you that's your thrill of the whole thing and until you get up there and experience what it's like to be on a bodybuilding stage and see your body in that type of condition which we only hold for usually one day it's just you can't ex describe the experience The contrast in bodybuilding art, not so much a difference actually, it's not as far-fetched as we might think it is. I, I can't separate them. I don't think I would even want to separate them. When I'm in the gym and training, it, for me it's like a meditation. Okay? My only focus is on training and contracting that muscle and thinking how that muscle is going to respond to the actual movement of the exercise. In art, when I'm doing my painting and drawing, it becomes another form of meditation. And the same thing, it starts to form, the paint or the drawing starts to form into, well, where did the images come from? Why does someone do bodybuilding? These are those existing questions that still have to be answered or concluded, perhaps. And what's interesting there is that, uh, I like to say that it comes from 
from nothing? Can something come from nothing? And uh, some of philosophers will probably disagree. <laughs> For myself, it does come from nothing because it prior to that, it didn't exist. The art didn't exist. The, the body didn't even exist until I or something pushed me in order to do that. And this is what that artist tried to explain uh, through that metaphysical uh, entity.